So today, um, we are going to start looking at ways of analyzing models. And I'm going to start super, super simple. And then we're going to get into much more complex applications later on. But what you're going to find is that the super, super simple thing that we do looks exactly the same in almost all cases. We're just making slight modifications to make it work for this system versus that system. Okay, so keep an open mind to the fact that this is pretty much the same thing everywhere. So um, when I said uh, what we're going to be doing is, is analyzing a certain geometry and its relationship to other geometry. In this case, our first analytical tool is going to be to verify whether or not this, um, this blob in the center of the square fills up a certain percentage of that square. And, and frankly, you guys could very easily just go into Rhino and type in area of both of the, the volumes and then get the numbers and do the math yourself. But the cool thing about Grasshopper is you can actually tie the analytics to a graphic trigger that shows you when you're on target, if that makes any sense. So um, let's start by trying to figure out what information we need to, to extract from the model before we can actually uh, act, render out the, the positive or negative um, result. Okay, so um, let's get Grasshopper started. Sorry, I should have done that ahead of time. <clears throat> and you're going to find that this first step is incredibly easy. All we're going to be doing is math. Just a very simple mathematical division, and you're going to get your, your function there. Uh, your proper result, sorry. Um, so first we need to find, uh, take these curves into Grasshopper and, and, and find the area, okay? So it's uh, the way that I've been typically doing my definitions is I start with the curve and then I, I translate that directly into a surface. That's the way I'll do this, but if you guys made these surfaces already, you can just jump to the surface step. But anyway, it looks like this. You drop in the curve param, and I'm going to need two of those. And then I'm going to need two surface params. And you can string those together. And then reference each curve. So I'm going to set the top curve for the rectangle. I'm going to set the bottom curve for the volume inside. Rectangle square, whatever you want to call it. Actually, I'm going to call this square slash site because, frankly, what we're doing here is we're simulating the verification of the footprint of a building covering a certain percentage of the site, which is relevant in the field of architecture. I'm not so sure it's super relevant in the world of academia, but still a good uh, case study. So um, that's the square or site, and this is the blob or footprint. How do I do what? Wait, so the curve is the rectangle and then the surface is the square? No. The, uh, the, the curve here is the square mm -hmm. and the curve here is the blob form inside. Oh, I it does need to be a closed curve. All right, so um, from here, it's, it's actually incredibly simple. And you guys are, your minds are going to be boggled when you, when you see this. Um, you just need to go to math, and then you need to go to operators and division. So um, when you're trying to find out a percentage of two of these values, what gets divided by what? If you're trying to find out the percent of coverage of the blob versus the overall square footage of the site. What's that? Well, kind of. There's a um, there's a there's an intermediary step that I was hoping you guys would catch. So if I divide the um, 
if I divide, sorry, let me explain it this way. If I divide the um, site by the blob, what I'm going to get is a, a one point something, yeah, a one point something value or higher than one, greater than one. Um, so that is not really the percentage value, that's your lot coverage, uh, that's your ratio. So what we need to do first is subtract, well, actually, how do I want to do that? No, we should be able to just divide it. So uh, this is what I'd like you to do. Just take the uh, footprint of the building and then take your uh, square or site. Oh, look at that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. It's a crazy week. Um, you need to find the area first. So let's go to surface analysis and area. And you're going to need two of these. And then what you're going to do is plug in uh, the blob on top. So make sure you pull the A output because that's where the area is. So far you're used to using the C output, which is the centroid of the volume. So I'm going to take this A and plug it into the top. And then I'm going to take the area of the site and I'm going to plug it into the bottom. And what you're going to find is that this gives you a percentage value. It comes out to 0.34 which means that that blob is covering 34% of the site. Which is actually shocking, shockingly high when you look at it. Okay, so um, the cool thing about this, and the, the thing that's going to sort of preface what we're going to do next, is that as you select that volume, it's very, very easy now for you to take say um, you can turn your edit points on and you can start pushing and pulling this geometry and testing whether or not it's still you know with uh, you can basically just test what the percentage is of this volume as you increase it Okay, so now it's actually covering over half of the site. So why is this useful? Anybody know? What's that? Guys, why would this be useful? It saves a lot of time. Why does it save a lot of time? Right. If you need to know the area or the law coverage or some kind of percentage value, you can easily just find it out using this method. Now, here's another cool thing that I think you should be aware of. Um, what we can do with Grasshopper is set it up so that we don't have to monitor this panel at all. We can set it up so that if the blob covers a certain range of percentages, it will be rendered in green. If it's outside of that range, it'll be rendered in red meaning it's, it's not correct or it's too large or too small. Okay, so I'm going to stop this real quick and then we're going to jump into doing that. But before I do that, are there any questions on this? No, no questions. Okay, good. It's pretty simple.